It's a weird feeling you get from playing Unreal. It's a known classic of the 90s, yet it's overshadowed by games like Half-Life and Quake, even though I'd argue from a technical and artistic perspective, Unreal is a lot more interesting than the majority of PC games at the time. Unreal was released in early 98 by Epic Games, who were showing off their new graphical engine, Unreal 1.0, which was all about the size. Huge open maps were entirely new for the FPS genre. It was a true technical leap. It looked worlds better than anything else at the time, and you gotta respect its ambition. Similar to Half-Life, I can actually feel some of the decades old wonder that gamers of the past would have felt after installing it for the first time. Actually, a lot of the praise Half-Life gets can be applied to the earlier Unreal game. To give you an idea, the story of Unreal is both simplistic in execution, yet great in artistic depth and detail, making it a highly original experience. You awaken what was once your prison cell, deep in the bowels of a penal ship that's crashed landed on an uncharted planet. You're seemingly the only survivor, and like most survivors, your goal is to stay alive. It's hard not to be reminded of System Shock throughout many parts of Unreal, especially when aboard derelict human spaceships with broken down machinery and corpses littering the ground. You never meet up with any humans, but data pads reveal their past misendeavors that led to their demise. So initially, your journey is a lonesome and pessimistic one. You're given no real directions on how to escape. This openness and story goes beyond simply wondering what could have got you locked away on a high security spaceship, to where you can change your gender and character model in the options before playing. By default, you play as a female. The gender element doesn't mean anything besides a different grunt soundbite, but the choice of who you can play as makes your character feel a lot more meaningful. Since you don't speak of any background info, you can really get immersed in your own way. But seriously, the plot is kind of generic. You have the native Napali population being subjugated by the Skajar Empire, a warrior caste of aliens that don't take kindly to loose cannons like yourself. The natives of the planet are the closest you'll get to proper allies, who are willing to help supply you with equipment as long as you can keep them alive. Being totally defenseless, weak, and overall kind of pathetic, it's hard not to rally behind them against the alien overlords. They remind me a lot of the Madakins from the Old World series. From the get-go, you can pick up a universal translator that can conveniently decipher alien language and supply from various ruins that you're the coming messiah that will banish the Skajar. But the great thing is, you can totally ignore all of it and just focus on progressing stage to stage. You have to give credit to Unreal's artistic vision. The Unreal Engine really allows the large environments to run well and contain an intricate layout of buildings and geometry which maintains a unique variety of levels throughout the game. A lot of the levels contain different fauna and flora you can interact with which really pulls you into a very believable alien setting, adding to the whole survivalist feel. Many of the stages have a very Inca and Heisha Gaga design, which sounds like a terrible combination, but works really well in a video game, especially a well-made one. But the whole experience would only feel half-hearted if it wasn't for that amazing soundtrack playing in the background. Composed by the same guys that would later craft the highly memorable Deus Ex score, Unreal's tracks are less prominent, but they add that fantastic atmospheric and natural touch that complements all the maps in the entire 9-12 hour journey. The turn it sets is the polar opposite of what Quake 2 produced. Unreal creates a more interesting and contemplative vibe that sticks around with you longer. While the levels are huge, it's less for the design portion and more in creating a strong, visually thematic moment. Walking across a straight path before entering a crashed ship becomes worlds more interesting when the towering spaceship juts into the sky. For the most part, it is a linear game. Interiors play much like the levels from Quake 2, with buttons and switches that need to be pushed to access more of the stage. Unfortunately, the lack of a notes or objective screen for what you're doing can result in a fair bit of wandering around until hitting the correct widget. The outdoor parts are mostly have you hoofing it to the next area, but allow some breathing room between the chaotic and often bloody firefights. The best levels use large settings for amazing effect. Easily one of my favourite levels is Bluff Eversmoke that features massive towers and deep underground catacombs packed with murals and diaries giving insight to the lives of the natives and the occupying forces. It's a great combination of design, gameplay and story that I would have liked more of, but that's what happens with mobile designers doing their own thing. Really though, Unreal plays much like any other smooth, fast paced shooter of the time. You can easily compare it to Quake, though the larger environments allow much more freedom in approaches towards combat, allowing great adversity in movement and tactics. The arsenal on offer is pretty sweet, though in line for the time. You've got a realistic selection of machine guns and sniper rifles, and more experimental and fanciful items like a fast firing saw blade and a gel like gun that can be used to set traps. The best weapon is easily the flak gun, working as a powerful shotgun and an effective grenade launcher as the alt fire, it's your go to weapon for mincing up the opposition. 
One of the most useful tools is an energy weapon you pick up at the start. The Disruptor, while initially weak, can be improved with upgrade canisters scattered about that makes it quite powerful late game, encouraging exploration of the world. And they all look and sound fucking beautiful. The game's rocket launch has an awesome loading sequence before spewing out some high ordnance, and the biogun's great green globs look great hanging off the walls. Even mundane weapons like the sniper rifle become way more interesting once they start cleaving heads right the fuck off. You get a fairly consistent ammo pickup rate, giving you plenty of opportunities to use them, but not totally able to lean on a singular tool. But you're going to need each and every weapon at your disposal, because the enemy AI is pretty damn ruthless. Even though they are decades old, prepare to get annihilated a good few times by the Skajar war parties. You'll see them dive roll, dodge your attacks, and really play aggressively, often forcing you onto the defense. Some use your own weapons. This can make certain engagements tough, with machine gun fire and rockets whizzing past you. Their actual design is similar to that of the Covenant from Halo, at least with the Jackal and the Elite builds. The game initially starts off very easy, but it picks up after a few levels where you can be limping to the next medkit if you're playing sloppily. It can be cheap with the Skajar getting close to you, making some weapons unusable, unless you want to die along with them. Also, not a fan of how some enemies can so easily avoid projectiles using their seemingly psychic abilities. But combat maintains a fun and challenging feel that on the higher difficulties will really test your skills. Outside of combat, you may have to deal with the basic environmental puzzles. They're usually stuff like activating a keyboard and moving a lever and destroying some environmental objects to clear a path. I felt some of the levels were too complex for their own good, with a lot of backtracking and maze-like structures that bogs down the pacing. Sometimes you can actually get stuck only to realise you can get by by pushing a door hard enough. Because Unreal is a physics engine of sorts, it can play up with the geometry getting in your way or puzzles being unnecessarily obtuse. One of the enemies in the game hurls rocks at you that can inflict an insane amount of damage, even if it's only a few pebbles. But god does seeing the 8 ball secondary fire look sweet as all hell. It's very interesting seeing games like Half-Life lap up the praise for mechanics that are already implemented in Unreal. Graphically, Unreal is a game showing its age with the low texture quality and simple animations. Luckily, the rich and varied scenery and colours that almost constantly surround you negates the more dated sights. It holds up far better than shooters with a blander, disinterested style to them, regardless of how nice the textures look. But credit to the lighting engine, which makes some of the darker environments extremely atmospheric. On the technical side, you may need a patch to make the game run at a solid frame rate, but it's only a very minor annoyance. For me, Unreal is a textbook definition of a great game. It's simple while feeling meaningful, hard but usually based on skill rather than luck and save scumming. The ease of playing and enjoying Unreal gives it a lot of staying power over the years. I hope that more attention comes to the original Unreal rather than its multiplayer mega hit sequel, but I've done my part by recommending it to almost anyone. That means you. 